The Mass setting can be found at hymn number 194 in the St. Michael Hymnal. Our opening hymn is number 714, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, number 714. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Take away. 
us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people, you have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them, and bring them back to their meadow, there they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them, so that they no longer fear and tremble. And none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. 
Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The apostles gathered to Thank you. Good job. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, "Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest for a while." People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in a boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked, he saw the vast crowd. His heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. It's very rare, by very rare, I mean, I don't remember in the last three years when, I, when I've, I've done this, for me to write down a homily. You guys will know why that's a good thing at the end of this in like four minutes from now. But sometimes, it's, sometimes it is necessary when uh, it's a topic that I don't particularly, uh, I'm not particularly fond of, of, of preaching about or that there's risk of misunderstanding, I want to make sure I say everything very clearly. The drawback to that, though, is, is in, in reading this, I don't get to, like, see y'all. And I went through last Mass after preaching the homily, and I was like, I feel like I'm missing something. And what I was missing was seeing you guys. So I'm going to look at you all right now for a minute, and then I'm going to preach. So uh, this particular topic for most of you guys isn't going to come as any surprise. Um, it's going to be kind of like preaching to the choir, but I mean, if you're in a choir, you know that you have to practice even pieces of music that you already know. It's not a bad thing to refresh your memory on things, to come to a different understanding of something, clearer understanding. And then, of course, there are always people who, for, for whom a topic might be relatively new. So um, we won't worry too much about that. What I want to do is take the occasion of this gospel to briefly but directly warn you about a very popular and very seductive danger in the life of, the, of Christians today. I'm not going to talk about the neglect and self-interested Jewish religious leaders that Jeremiah warned us about. They were, in fact, bad shepherds, but their day had come, has come and gone. The temple's been destroyed and rebuilt in the resurrected body of Jesus. The covenant of Moses is made obsolete in the blood of that same true Passover lamb. And I'm not going to warn you against bad Catholic priests, though there are plenty of us out there. We priests are weak, fallen men, prone to sin, 
That shouldn't come as any surprise to anybody, but we are nevertheless appointed by God to be true shepherds of his people in the person of his son, Jesus. As we heard in the gospel, seeing that his people needed a shepherd and one who would shepherd his people well, Jesus had compassion on them. He had compassion on us and became became for us the true and good shepherd. Importantly, he promised that his, at his ascension that he would not leave us abandoned. So he established a fraternity of shepherds appointed, by, appointed directly by him and conformed to and empowered by his own priesthood to teach, govern, and sanctify God's people. Again, while priests are not perfect men, they are truly and divinely ordained into that fraternity and given all the divine power they need to be good and true shepherds for the salvation of souls entrusted to their care. Instead, I need to warn you today against those men and women who present themselves as pastors, as shepherds, but are no pastors at all men and women who instead are merely bad sheep pretending to be shepherds, namely Protestant ministers. Now, I absolutely do not attribute any malicious intent in a general sense to the motivation of Protestant pastors. In fact, I I assume goodwill when by their actions, nevertheless, they mislead, starve, and endanger God's people. They have not been called from membership in the flock to become shepherds of the flock and therefore have no authority or ability to do what Christian shepherds need to do. Presenting themselves as such makes them dangerous. They starve the flock with false or partial understandings of the gospel, failing to feed the sheep by the verdant pastures and restful waters which which soothes the soul. They lack the mandate to lead the flock in right paths and are impotent to defend the sheep against the attack of the wolves, having been given by Christ neither crook nor staff. And they do not possess the keys to access the sheepfold of heaven, of which Jesus says, I am the gate, and about which Jesus says to Peter, to you I give the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, If this were a completely obvious situation, I wouldn't have to warn anybody about it, but some, even Catholics, are easily misled by the drama of lights and fog machines and rock bands and won over by coffee shops and child care during service and are anesthetized by emotive preaching, sentimental doctrine, and the overall non-religious, undefined characteristics of those trendy, non-denominational communities not to mention the older denominational ones. It does not matter how entertaining their service was compared to the sacred liturgy of the Mass. The heart-throbbing praise band is not the sacrament of worship. It doesn't matter how exciting, placating, or affirming of, of of our sinfulness the preacher is to listen to in person or on podcasts. He or she is not one of Jesus's shepherds, but is merely a disobedient sheep. One ought not to follow such. They have no authority to govern the flock of Christ. They teach varying levels of error and and a compromised gospel, and they have no divinely ordained power to sanctify God's, God's people through the administration of the sacraments by which we are saved. Do not be led astray by false, impotent shepherds who protest Christ and his church and do not have the power to sanctify, but instead but instead offer you all the glit and glamour of the world's religion of plurality, relativism, and tolerance, which does not have the power to save. Rather, follow the Good Shepherd, become and remain faithful to and firmly members of Jesus' true flock, the Church. Only in the Church are we taught the fullness of the gospel of life, Only by the potency of the church are we defended from the wiles and attack of the devil, and only through the sacraments of which are we ransomed, healed, sanctified, and saved. In other words, do not be led astray by popular plurality of false shepherds, but become and remain steadfast members of the one holy Catholic and apostolic flock for whom Jesus is the good shepherd yesterday, today, 
and forever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For all who have vowed themselves to God that with his help they may faithfully keep to their resolve, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For peace among nations that delivered from all turmoil, the, pe the peoples may serve God in freedom of heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those in our community who are ill, especially Kathleen Weller, Cameron Banks, and Deacon Stephen, may God comfort them in their illness, we pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, especially Magda Gomes, Lynn Fox Lyon, James Uzi, let us call upon the judge of all humanity. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for the intentions, welfare, and sanctity of the Guay Guayavera family, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord May your mercy, we beseech you, O Lord, be with your people who cry out to you so that what they seek at your prompting they may obtain by your ready generosity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our second collection today is for the continued pastoral service of the Archdiocese of Military Services. The judgments of the Lord are right. They gladden the Thank you. 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion the varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you blessed the gifts of Abel so that, with each, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus, Sabaoth, Levis ut celiat terra, To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gregory John, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, the Guayaberas, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased, O, oh, be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Works he has shown 
flow, go now, make haste, and do not delay. Take the blessed sacrament to our sick brother or sister who couldn't be with us at the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Assure them of the prayers and the support of this community, and may he whom they receive save them and raise them up. Go now in peace. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple faith formation announcements here. Registration for faith formation for the coming school year is open. There's a QR code and a link available on the website. Also, if, as you exit on the left, there's a table with some nice brochures. If you have any questions about what we're doing with uh, Faith Formation, you can pick one of those up. Also, there is an information meeting for Faith Formation. It's going to be led by Chris, Christy McWee, who's our new Faith Formation coordinator. That's going to be Sunday, August 4th. There's going to be an English meeting, a meeting in English at 1130, so before this Mass. Um, in room, wait, af after this Mass, um, in room 3-5, and then there's going to be a Spanish uh, noon meeting at uh, 7 o'clock. So it sounds like they're just looking at a half-hour meeting. If you have questions about faith formation, what's this Pathways Rooted thing that we're doing now, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really wonderful, but if you have questions about it, come and ask. High school and middle school summer uh, series is continuing. The next one is going to be on Wednesday, July 31st. I believe that's next, not this Wednesday, but the following. Middle schoolers are going to gather from 6 to 7 and high schoolers from 7 to 8. And we have a new youth choir program starting. Uh, Amelia and Vince are working hard on putting together a choir for kindergartners through high school. There's going to be a couple different age groups, right? So it's not going to be all lumped together. Um, if you're a cool high schooler, you don't, you're not going to be singing with the first grader, right? But, uh, but that, that should uh, prove itself to be very fruitful for the parish and great for the kids who um, are getting involved. And then finally, uh, remember our 10th anniversary Mass on August 11th is going to be at 11 o'clock, not 10.30. This Mass is moved from 11 o'clock to 10.30. 11 on the 11th, okay? Uh, and then, of course, although... I mean, the happy, the happy thing will be that if you forget, you'll just show up a half hour early, right? No big deal, you get to pray. Uh, and then next, next Sunday's second collection is for our par de parish debt reduction. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass has ended. St. Michael the Archangel, defend Amen. us in battle. Be our protection. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruination of souls. Amen.